All right, so before I show you how to do uh, stoichiometry problems, I want to show you the skills you need in order to uh, begin uh, and to come up with the right answer. So this is, this is stuff that we've already know, uh, and the first conversion here is convert 56.49 grams of sodium carbonate to moles. Uh, so the first thing we would have to do there is know how to write the formula for sodium carbonate. And the reason we need that is we're starting in grams of sodium carbonate, and we're asked to find moles of sodium carbonate. So 56.49 grams of Na2CO3. So the way you want to start this is find the number, 56.49, the unit, grams, and what it is of, sodium carbonate. That's what starts our dimensional analysis chart here, where we're going to start canceling out units that we don't want and end up with the units that we want. So in order to do that, I have grams that I'm starting with. I want moles that I'm going to end up with. Well, the way you go from grams to moles, or the conversion factor that you need, is the molar mass. So I need to have uh, two Na's, one C, three O's from the formula for sodium carbonate, 23, so that's 46, 12, 3 times 16 is 48. Uh, add them up, and we get 106. Now that's 106 grams per mole. Or you could look at it as 106 grams is equal to one mole if you want to do it as a conversion factor. Uh, and so now I have grams here, so I want to put 106 grams here so that the grams and the grams will cancel. That will be equal to one mole of sodium carbonate. Grams cancels, so we said. And so now I need to uh, calculate this. So the, remember, the way we calculate these is we multiply across the top, and then we divide by each of the bottom numbers one at a time. That's the quick, easy way, so we don't have to write anything down. Uh, so I need to then, in this one, just do 56.49 times 1 uh, divided by 106. And I get, now for significant digits, we always go back to the original number in the problem, which has... 56.49, so that's four significant digits. So I want one, two, three, four significant digits. There's a two after the nine, so 0.5329 moles of sodium carbonate would be the correct answer. So that was just a nice, easy one-step problem, uh, our conversion factor being uh, the molar mass. Now, if I had started with moles and I wanted grams, it would have been the same thing, but I would have started with moles here, so then it would have been one mole and 106 grams there. Uh, all right, the next one. How many liters of oxygen gas are in 1.25 moles of O2 at STP? Uh, let me uh, get rid of the writing here so that I can not be so cluttered. All right, so remember that key phrase, at STP, meant at STP, one mole of any gas had a volume of 22.4 liters. So that was the key conversion factor for this one. But just like I said in the first one, find the number, the unit, and what it's of. So I am starting with 1.25 moles of O2, and that's going to start my conversion chart. So now I need the conversion factor. Well, I already said, at STP, one mole of any gas is 22.4 liters. So taking that and putting it into our, our, our chart here, we have moles. So I'm going to say one mole of O2 is equal to 22.4 liters of O2. The moles cancel. And you can see I have a 1 on the bottom, so I'm just going to do 1.25 um, times 22.4, and I get 28. Now I want three digits, so 28.0 liters of O2 gas. So that would be the second kind of conversion we need to know, which is what dealing with liters. Now it related to that would be if you have um, if you have milliliters or centimeters cubed or decimeters cubed, they're the big ones. Uh, and remember, I gave you a conversion factor that I told you was going to be recurrent, and you should memorize it. So we've already learned uh, this before. Uh, but just to highlight it, reiterate it, refresh your memory, uh, 1,000 milliliters is equal to a liter. 1,000 centimeters cubed is equal to a decimeter and a liter and 1,000 milliliters. So all of these are equal to each other, so we just have to pick the two we need. Or you can look at it as one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed. Milliliters and centimeters cubed are equal. Liters and decimeters cubed are equal. And it takes 1,000 of the smaller ones to get to the bigger ones. Um, and so if this asks for how many milliliters instead of liters, you know, we'd have one more step here uh, getting to milliliters using that conversion factor. All right, the last review question here then is 67. So again, the number of the unit, what it's of. 
So it's liters of CO2. And we want to convert this time to mass. Now mass, if it just said mass, uh, it would be in grams, but this one actually does say mass in grams. Um, and again, it's a gas at STP, so I'm starting with liters. So I just did 22.4 liters is one mole of CO2, and that gets me rid of liters and I got moles. So now I have moles, I want grams, so it's similar to the first one, uh, I need a molar mass. I have uh, CO2, so one carbon is 12, two oxygens, 32, so I end up with 44 grams in a mole, 44 grams per mole, or 44 grams equals one mole on the bottom, so again, that mole cancels, uh, and I got grams. So this was a two-step problem instead of a one, but they're all the same, moles to grams, grams to moles, or liters to moles or moles to liters. Those are the four key ones uh, that you're going to have to use when we do stoichiometry problems. All right, so 67.7 times 44, remember you multiply across the top, divided by 22.4 on the bottom, and I get 133 grams of CO2. Now, did you notice each time I didn't just write the unit, but I wrote unit of what it, the substance is, liters of oxygen, grams of carbon dioxide. Uh, up here it was moles of sodium carbonate. All right, so from there, I'm just going to jump right into stoichiometry and see how we can handle this. And uh, If you had those, or no problem with those three calculations, then this stuff should be pretty easy for you. The new part is, and we've talked about this before, stoichiometry means uh, a ratio of moles. Um, now, in a balanced reaction such as this one, uh, this 2, 1, 2, and 1 are used to balance the reaction. We've already learned that. We've been practicing that. We had a couple tests on that. Uh, so we understand how to do that. Um, all right, so now the way we're going to use that is uh, this 2 right here tells me in a perfect reaction of this, I'm going to use 2 moles of lithium, 1 mole of CaCl2, because there's nothing there. Remember, it's a 1. 2 moles of LiCl, and 1 mole of Ca. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those coefficients of the balanced reaction to get a ratio between two substances that are asked for in the calculation. So let me just do one, um, and I'll write the steps of a stoichiometry problem right up here on the top. Um, or actually, I'll write them right here on the side so I can kind of zoom in. Um, the first step to a stoichiometry problem is you have to calculate moles. So the first thing you're going to do every time is get moles. Now, sometimes you'll already be given moles. Um, but how are you going to know? Well, you've got to read. Um, remember what I said in the last problem. Here's the number, the unit, and what it is of. So there's where I begin. I have 49.6 grams of calcium. So that's going to start my conversion chart, my dimensional analysis chart. I just said the first step in a stoichiometry problem is you have to get moles because you have to do a mole ratio. So I have grams. So I've got to go from grams to moles. So I need the molar mass of just Ca in this case. Um, I look up on my periodic table and I see that it is 40.1 grams of calcium and one mole of calcium. So I've done that, just like the first review, review problem. I got moles. All right, so I'm finished with my first step. I got moles. So now my second step in a stoichiometry problem is I am going to use the balanced reaction to get a mole ratio from calcium, what I'm starting with, to one of the other substances in the balanced reaction. It doesn't matter which one. Here's calcium, and I can see there's nothing written in front. So what that means is I have one mole of calcium according to the balanced reaction as the ratio. So now the question says how many grams of calcium chloride? So I want to go from calcium, one mole, to whatever calcium chloride. Well, here's calcium chloride, and that also has nothing in front, so that's also one mole of calcium chloride. So there's how you get from one substance to the other. We didn't have to do that in the review questions. We were just talking about one particular substance. But now we're talking about in a chemical reaction, and the coefficients of the balanced reaction are mole ratios. So I go from one calcium to one calcium chloride. So then the last step in a stoichiometry problem is you've got to read the question and figure out what unit do I have. Uh, or what am I asked for? Sorry, what unit am I asked for? Right now, I just did a mole ratio. So I have moles, and I have to convert it to 
what other unit? That's really what you're trying to find. Well, it says how many grams. So I have to find grams of calcium chloride. I have moles of calcium chloride. So just like, again, the first review question on the previous slide, uh, we need to get grams. So CaCl2, I have 1 Ca, 2 Cl's, 40.1, 71, add them up, and you get 101.1 grams per mole, or 111.1 grams equals one mole of calcium chloride. The moles of calcium chloride cancel, the moles of calcium cancel, and the grams of calcium cancel. Therefore, I know I set it up right. So now I'm back to plugging it in my calculator. I have 49.6. I'm going to multiply right across the top, so times 1 times 1 times 111.1, a lot of 1s. And then divide by 40.1, and divide by 1, divide by 1. So the correct answer with correct significant digits, remember you go back to this original number, 49.6 has 3. So I'm going to say 137 grams of calcium chloride. So now what does that mean in real terms? If I were in lab and I needed 49.6 grams of this, well, the stoichiometry tells me that if I want 49.6 grams of calcium, I have to start with 137 grams of calcium chloride. So that's really what we found. All right, so let me erase this, and let's try the second one. Okay, so another balanced reaction. Magnesium chloride plus lithium yields lithium chloride plus magnesium. A single replacement reaction, what we had our last test on. It's balanced, two LIs, two CLs, one MG on both sides. Okay, so remember where to start. Well, we're looking for the number, so 46.98 grams of MG. 46.98 grams of MG. Do my chart. First step in a stoichiometry problem was get moles. I have grams. So I need the molar mass of mg, which is 24.3 grams of mg, and one mole of mg. Right from the periodic table, you don't have a nice easy molar mass, it's just an element. All right, I got moles. The ratio, I'm using mg. So according to the balanced reaction, there is one mole of mg. Now I like to write it just like I have it in the balanced reaction, but remember this is the mole ratio. So mole ratio from the balanced reaction. Coefficients in front tell us how many, how many moles. All right, so now I've done that part. So now I could go to any of those other three in the balanced reaction. But the question says, how many moles of Li? So I'm going to go to Li. doesn't matter if you're going from left to right, right to left, two of them on the right, two of them on the left. You can go to any of the other substances from the one that you start with. All right, so that means on my balanced reaction here, it takes two moles of lithium to make one mole of magnesium. All right, so my third step in a stoichiometry problem, so first step was I got moles. Next step was I got the mole ratio. Now the last step is to change from moles to whatever unit the question is asking for. This question asks for moles. I have moles, so I'm done. If I asked for grams or if it asked for the mass, then I would have to do one mole in the molar mass of lithium. Or if it was a gas at STP, I could say how many liters or how many milliliters at STP. But uh, this is a solid, so we wouldn't do that. All right, so anyway, we're done. So we calculate. So it's 46.98 times 2, cross the top, divide by 24.3, and we get 3.8666. So 3.8, now I want a significant digit, so I have 4 there, so 3.86, 3.867. Moles of lithium. So there's stoichiometry in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to do a few questions from our review sheet from last night, or sorry, our homework sheet from last night. Uh, but watch that a few times. I think you'll see that these are very repetitive. Once you figure one out, you pretty much have them all. They're not terribly difficult. But if you're missing holes in your chemistry game, you don't know how to get from grams to moles, moles to grams, uh, or liters, uh, then you really need to practice some of these and uh, get a little better at that.